Okay, so what we're going to do today is demonstrate the concept of AGLP, where the accounts are organized in Active Directory into global groups. Those global groups are then added to a local group or a domain local group, where that local group is given permission to a resource. That resource will be the folder on the server. You guys ready? So I'm going to create a user, and we'll create a user in the Fenimore, the Fen OU, the users OU, organization unit, and we're going to create a new user, and we'll create Sally Smith, <coughs> and Sally's login will be Sally.Smith. And notice Sally that Smith is a user at the Halverson.prv. And this is the old version of the directory naming scheme, which is pre-Windows 2000. This is referred to as the NetBIOS name of the domain. And then the login name for that user. Give him a password. Just in case I forget, it's password.123. Somebody can remind me. And I'm not going to require them to change your password at this time just for this lab. Okay, so Sally Smith exi exists, and now I'm going to create, Sally is going to be in customer service, right? Sally uh, Actually, they are. <laughs> yes. Um, I'm going to create a new group, and here I get options for what type of group I'm going to create. So I'm going to create a group called customer serve or cus serve and this is going to be a global group that's what it defaults to and it's going to be a security group I'm not going to use distribution because that's for email and this is not going to be a domain local group or a universal group for the enterprise um, that we could possibly be creating so again we're creating a global group global to the domain halverson.prv okay Okay, so now I have a global group, and I'm going to put Sally inside of that customer service global group. Hello, Sally. Sally is, by default, a member of the global group domain users. I'm going to add customer service group. Yep, there's a customer service group. So now she is also a member of the <coughs> customer service group. Let's just double check. Customer service members, only Sally. Looks good. Now, I'm going to create a folder for the customer service people to store all of their PowerPoints and spreadsheets and Word documents. I'm go to Windows Explorer. And on the C drive, which you typically wouldn't do, but for the sake of this lab, we're going to store the folder shares here. So I'm going to keep it a little more organized because I'm, I'm like that. I'm going to create a folder called data. So this could be essentially be your data drive, drive letter E. And then inside of data, I'm going to create a folder called customers. Oh, let's go. Oh. We'll keep a short name here. Custer. I like short names. So this is where customer service people will store all their files and folders, right? So in order to give permissions and share this folder, I need to have that local group exist, right? Because right now I only have a local customer service group. I'm sorry, a global customer service group. I need to create a local one. So I'm going to go back and create another group. This time I'm going to create a domain local group called CustServe Folder. Notice it's a domain local group. Who is a member of the customer serve folder? Nobody. So we need to add CustServe and the CustServe group 
Hit OK. So now the CustServe Global Group is now a member of the local group, CustServe Folder. Go back to my folder, which is in the Data folder, and I'm going to go to Properties. Here are the properties of that folder that I want to share. Now, sharing and security. This is where we haven't gotten into much detail on this yet. Sharing permissions are like the, the um, guard at the door. If you want to go into a bar and you're under 21, the guy at the door is going to ask for your ID. You show them your ID, you can get into the bar, right? But that doesn't guarantee that you'll get served by the bartender, correct? When you go to the bartender, that's where the bartender is going to double verify that you are 21 or you're not too inebriated that you can have another drink, correct? So this sharing here, this concept of sharing is we're going to, the server is going to allow you to see this share and access it, but the security is going to verify whether you have access to read or change any of the contents of it. Does that make sense? Hopefully that analogy worked. So what I'm going to do for the sharing is I'm going to share this and I like to go into the advanced sharing and I'm going to click share this folder and the name is going to be customer serve. Go to permissions. Right now, everyone can read anything inside of that share. Everyone is a default group, which is anybody in my <coughs> domain. Yes. It's anybody. Which is anybody. It's Correct. anybody. Anybody yes. that can get on. Anybody that can get onto my network can now see this share. Right. Well, on the local machine. No, through the network. This is uh, through the network. Everyone is everyone. I know. I think we're saying the same thing. Okay, so this means that the anybody that is using this share can only read through this share. Even if I give customer service the ability to delete or change files, if this is what I leave it at, they will only be able to read those files. Does that make sense? So I want to give them full control. What this is doing is essentially getting rid of the, the person at the door checking IDs and relying on the bartender to check the ID and to verify whether or not you are given access to this. Okay, So that's what I'm doing right here. So everyone is allowed to access this share and do whatever the file permissions or the security settings permit them to do. Notice the path, the server name, slash the name of the share. That is how my workstations will access this share on my network. Okay, so all I've done so far is create the folder and made the folder visible on the network. Now I need to set who has access to the contents of this folder. That's where security comes in. By default, it inherits the permissions from the folder or drive above it. So in this instance, it inherited the permissions from the data folder that I created, who in turn inherited it from the C drive. So these are the permissions that are set by default on the C drive. Users are allowed to read and list contents. Administrators can are allowed to do everything. And the system is allowed to do everything. And creator owner has special permissions. Creator owner is a default group that is if you create a folder you are the owner of that folder. Create a file you are the owner of that file. But everyone else can still see it and change it. You just happen to be the owner. Okay? So again we'll get in a little more detail on this later. 
So what I want to do is I want to click on advanced and I want to change the permissions and tell it to stop the inheritance from the parent object. I want to stop the inheritance and I want to add them, meaning I want to copy them. I want to keep them the way they're at, but I want to copy them. So this gives me the ability then to go up here under groups or users and the users I can now remove and now I can add because I don't want just any user to see customer service files, right? Yeah. So I want to add, now which group am I going to add? The customer service local group, right? The customer service folder. So custserve underscore folder. Check to make sure that that name exists. It does. So now the Cusser folder local group has modify permissions. I hit OK. So administrators can still see everything, right? Which is good because we need to be able to see stuff to help them out or restore files or whatever we might need to do. The customer service department is able to modify and make changes to that and these other system and creator owner I have not been modified because we just copied that from the normal inheritance <coughs> hit close and now let's see if Sally Smith can access the folder I'm gonna move this out of the way and go to my workstation I'm gonna log out I'm going to log in on my workstation. Switch user. I'm going to log in as Sally Smith. My password. Dot one two three. And now I go to my file manager and I can look at my network. And it hasn't populated with any of this information yet. So I can just go up into the address bar and type in the UNC path. It's called the Universal Naming Convention Path, which is my server name dot my domain name dot PRV slash. Oh, look at that. It lists all of them there. And here's my customer service. Wait, I didn't create these. Where do these come from? These are created by default when you created Active Directory. These all were created. But here's my customer service one. And the folder is empty. Why? There's nothing in there. Let's create a new text document. Look at that. I can create a new text document. Let's create a new Hello. Can I save it? Let's save as hello. So now I have yeah hello.c from another class, right? So now I have three files in here. Let's create a new folder. Hey, we got a new folder. Okay, so now Sally is saving files and folders on the server. Let's just take a look. Here's the server on the C drive of the server. Here I'm accessing it from the network, right? But over here on the server, I'm looking at it, it's on the C drive of the server. Oh, look what Sally did. Created these files on the server. Does that make sense? Now let's log in as a user just to make sure. Let's log in as Suli, Susie Smith. Let me uh, reset her password because I can't remember what her password is. And we won't make her change it. So I'm going to log in as Susie and see if I can access these files. Log in as Susie Smith. Well, that's logging in. Is Susie Smith a member of anything? 
<laughs> She's a member of HR, but not a member of customer service, is she? So let's go back and take a look. I'm on my workstation now. I'm going to type in the UNC path. Server 10 dot my you domain name. Server 10 slash share name. Yeah, yeah, I could, but I like to use the fully qualified oh, yeah, domain no, name. I just, I just yes, yes, you could just type in server 10. That's the purpose of sharing. Oh, look at that. I can see that there's a share there, but I can't access it. So here's just using server 10. So there's the share, customer service share. I try to get into it and I'm not able to. So again, the UNC path always starts out with a backslash backslash. And then the name of the server, and again, I like to use the fully qualified domain name, the full name of the server, just because it resolves IP addresses from one network to another. So if we had multiple sites at different locations on different networks, this would work correctly across those. Not rely on the NetBIOS name, which is a broadcast technology which would only work locally in a local area network. Cody, we have a question? Um, 